So, Professor Schloss, I mean, many people think that if you can explain the evolutionary origins of religious belief and all that kind of thing, then basically, doesn't that undermine religion altogether? Doesn't that make that belief somehow less believable? First of all, if we could explain the origins of religion evolutionarily, and that's kind of like asking if we could explain the origins of life uh, evolutionarily at this point, we really can't do either, although there are promising proposals on the table. But if, if we could, at, at one level of response to that would, would be to say, well, no, not at all. It wouldn't undermine the uh, veracity of religious belief to say that the nature of the world was such that it first of all gave rise to living creatures, and that over the course of uh, time those creatures became progressively more uh, intelligent and reflective and aware of self and uh, the environment to uh, eventually develop the capacity to believe in a uh, transcendent purpose to life and even a creator of life. And more than that, uh, believing in that, to uh, develop the conviction that life was best lived when lived yielded uh, to the creator far from undermining religious belief, uh, in, in my view, that actually invitalizes it, uh, makes uh, God all the greater. But if we take a step further down and ask, well, how much of religion would we expect evolutionary theory to explain if it simply involved the origin of the capacity for religious belief? Uh, and then, if secondly, it involved a, a proposal that not only do we understand something of its origin, but we understand something of the way in which it functions or the way in which it's adaptive, that, that human beings are so constituted biologically that in fact religious belief uh, solves certain problems, problems of uh, trust in community, uh, problems of, of formation of cooperative alliances, uh, as some of the evolutionary theories of, of religion right now propose that too wouldn't constitute a problem. But the last level of explanation uh, actually probably does constitute a challenge. What if we have a, a scientific theory of religious belief that explains not only the capacity and not only the functions of religious belief, but as an explanation all the way down uh, in terms of the, the mechanisms that incline people, uh, that give not only the ability to believe, but incline uh, individuals and, and groups of people to believe certain things. Um, and the explanation would not in any way uh, involve the truth or the falsity of those beliefs. It would be like saying if we had a, which we don't have, but uh, if we had an evolutionary explanation not only for our capacity to do mathematics, but an explanation that uh, gave an account for why people believed certain mathematical propositions independent of their truth or their falsity. That's the goal right now of evolutionary theories of religion, because in order to be a naturalistic theory, you can't invoke God as an explanation for why somebody believes in God. And there are a number of philosophers working in the field right now that says, that wouldn't mean that religious beliefs were false but it would undermine our warrant for being confident in their truth. If we had a scientific explanation for why somebody had the ability to believe something, and more than that, for why somebody actually believed a particular proposition that didn't have anything to do with the truth or the falsity of that proposition. Although we still think mathematics is true, don't we? You know, that seems to be pretty objective, doesn't it? Like Pythagoras' theorem, something like that. We don't believe that because we just have brains that evolved to believe that. I think most people think that's actually true. Evolutionary theories of either arithmetic or, or mathematics don't actually propose an account of why people believe certain mathematical propositions that have only to do with their adaptive outcomes and nothing to do with their truth or falsity. And a number of the current proposals for religious belief are seeking to explain why people believe certain things about transcendent reality that has only to do with the outcomes of having those beliefs and nothing to do with whether the beliefs are true or false.
One way to think about it, and by the way, I think it is true, at least at face value, that if we have an account for why people believe things, and it works scientifically, uh, and it proposes an explanation for why people believe things independent of whether they're true or false, well, that doesn't make what we believe false, but it, it does seem to erode our confidence that what we do believe, that we have confidence for what we believe, is true. But then you might want to ask this. You might want to ask is, underneath the, uh, or the, the underlying foundation for that belief forming process, where'd that come from? And if in fact, um, if in fact we don't have an explanation all the way down, where did humans come from? Where did life come from? Where did the cosmos itself come from? Why is there something rather than nothing? Uh, we don't have that explanation, if, and if in fact the explanation is God, and that God created the world such that it gave rise to belief-forming organisms that were inclined to specific kinds of beliefs, and those beliefs are true because that's way, because there is a God and he created the world that way, then in fact I think we do have warrant uh, for confidence in those beliefs. Thank you very much, Professor. <laughs>